My name is Andy Ping, and I'm a fourth year PhD student at MIT CSAIL. I work with Julie Shaw in the Interactive Robotics Group and Jacob Andreas in the Language and Intelligence Groups. And my research primarily focuses on how we think about teaching robots efficiently using human feedback. So a project that I recently completed that we're very excited about um, is a project called Learning from Language Guided Abstractions. And the general idea is in you know, decision-making situations, particularly those that involve human interaction with robots, it's often very manually intensive for designers to specify all the different things that uh, a robot should care about. For example, if I want to bring you know, a person coffee, I want the robot to bring me coffee. Um, perhaps uh, I want the robot to set the coffee down in front of me at a particular distance, but maybe I also want them to avoid uh, really uh, potentially dangerous spillage, such as you know, putting the coffee on my laptop. And so these are all features I really want the robot to uh, know about in my uh, abstraction. Now the problem with a lot of current decision-making methods is that um, it's very difficult to specify all these features uh, a priori, and so we often end up needing to write reward functions or give demonstrations for how to do the task, and these don't generally tend to scale really well to new situations. And so our main idea in our project was why don't we use general prior knowledge that humans have accrued from interaction to be able to understand what are important features or elements of the task. And so in this project, we used a pre-trained language model to basically specify, given a particular task, what are all the aspects that we care about or don't care about for uh, finishing the task correctly. And so we find that using uh, the language model, we're able to learn far more efficiently given limited human feedback, and we're able to generally generalize better to new environments. It's always challenging to think about when does it make sense to be asking a general prior uh, knowledge, like, you know, what's the kind of thing that a language model can tell us that everyone seems to care about versus information that we need to extract on an individualized or personalized perspective, right? Perhaps I as a user have a particular preference for how I want my coffee cup to be put down that is very different than what general humans um, maybe on the internet seem to think. And so how do we think about balancing feedback between large-scale internet uh, accrued knowledge, such as those contained in language models, versus understanding when to query humans directly for that kind of feedback. And so that's a perpetual balance that we're always trying to strike, and understanding kind of how to do that is a, is a research direction moving forward for sure. So typically, um, we think about projects in maybe three steps. Um, our first step is often in identifying the formal research question or kind of the framework that we're looking to contribute. You know, theoretically, if this were to work, why would this be interesting? Um, and so we try to formalize um, things very precisely and clearly before we start experimentation. And then in the second phase, we typically run uh, these kinds of robotic tasks and simulation. So we want to test the algorithm to make sure that, you know, on these simulated tasks that we think it should work on, whether or not it actually works. And then usually at that point, um, we, we will uh, kind of transfer that onto a, a real robot. Um, so in, in the last couple projects, we've been collaborating a lot with the Boston Dynamics AI Institute on their spot robot, which is like a huge kind of dog with an arm on it. Um, and we want to make sure that the algorithms that we've developed work really well on the real robot. So typically three phases to, to all our projects. And importantly, we always test with real human users. I think it's really important to, to know that these things are working with kind of the, the real people in the world that we want them to. We've done some fun things where we've had, you know, Spot go and pick up various objects and manipulate them in various ways and bring them to various, you know, people. Um, and so I think one of my favorite tasks was uh, we, we were able to get a Spot to reliably pick up different forms of trash off the ground and know whether or not an aluminum, aluminum can belonged in, say, a recycling bin versus uh, an orange, you know, needing to belong in the compost bin. And so it's that kind of like intuitive knowledge that any you know, lay person off the street would be able to tell you that we really want to make sure the robot also knows. Um, and so we're, we're moving forward, we're really excited about being able to extend um, various kind of like implicit preference type of tasks into household settings. Yeah, so this is kind of the beauty of why the general knowledge base, such as the language model, is so powerful. Um, maybe previously, we would have needed to show the robot 10,000 examples of uh, what is a compost uh, item versus what is a, a recycling item. But now, all we need is the camera sensor to segment whatever object we're trying to pick up and label it. And then with that label, the language model can meaningfully tell us kind of what category these things belong in, right? And so, for example, a pipeline we could run is we put a camera on, on spot 
plot, and it looks at an orange, and it tells me, oh, hey, this object is an orange, and it produces the text caption orange. Now, with that text caption orange, we can query a language model to say, okay, well, in the context of throw away this object, what kinds of bins would we maybe want the orange to be thrown into? And the language model can kind of leverage its common sense prior to tell us what might be the desired task. Now, if I'm like a bad person and I really don't like recycling, then we would have, of course have to kind of adjust for my particular preferences and wanting to say throw everything in the trash. But what we do have is a really reasonable starting point to be able to, to figure out how to decide in the world without needing me explicitly as the user to teach the robot that. Yeah, so I, I really like having academic freedom to kind of ask uh, to ask all sorts of you know questions that I, I find interesting, and so I think um, staying in academia as a professor would be a, a path that I would be really excited about. Um, but you know, kind of in parallel to that, I prior to my PhD, I actually started working in, in tech policy at the White House, and so I think. Being able to be uh, engaged with the uh, general discourse happening in our community and outside of our community with respect to how we think about these systems um, uh, impacting society is, is, a, is a route that I'm really excited about as well. So I think some sort of academic freedom uh, afforded through uh, professorship uh, and being able to generally work with policymakers on important matters is something I'd be really excited about.